Hi guys, Murugi Muni here. It's Lydia KM. And we're back again with another episode of The Messy In Between. It's, it's definitely, definitely TMI. TMI. I even forgot I had a fan. Oh, no, we have fans today, guys. Crazy. Oh. We, we decided to invite our fans to come yeah, into the studio fans. today. Yes. If you're not seeing us, we are so sorry, but we have this lovely fan. Oh yeah, actually there's people who are not seeing us. Yeah, yeah there's people who are not seeing us. But anyway, we have these fans, very Bridgerton. Very Bridgerton. Very Bridgerton. Lady Bridgerton. Hello, Lady, Lady Lydia. Lydia. <laughs> Lady Lydia. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to this brand new episode of TMI. Okay. And for those mm. who don't know still, it's the messy in between. The messy in between. The messy yeah. in between, guys. I know it's TMI as well, mm. but it's definitely the messy in between. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, guys, for the love on our previous episode. It was quite an intense one. It was an intense there were a bit one. of debates in the comments. We yeah. see you, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. We are all here to learn because I mean no one's perfect. We're just learning through this journey. This messy in between is what we are learning. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for the love and thank you for interacting with us as usual. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure you're following our Instagram pages, TMI Podcast K. E. Murugi Mwenyi and Lydia K M. Yes. Exactly. Now tell us why do we have fans today? So we have these amazing fans because me and Joanne, number one, are diehard fans of, of, of Bridgerton. Yeah, of, of Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. And when was it, the first season? Was it last year? Or I last think year but last one? Year. I think it was twenty twenty. I think it might have been twenty twenty. <gasps> Anyway, no. whenever it was, it caused a star, obviously, because mostly of the guy, the main Definitely. guy who was acting in it. it um, was, yeah, but also I think just like the themes of the show, the yeah. themes of the show are just like ridiculously like, wow, like, okay. Yeah. And similar to a lot of things that we yeah. kind of still see anyway. Mm. Um, I personally feel like the thing with Bridgerton that sets it apart mm. is because um, there's, there's so much representation of all the races. Whereas mm. before, anything set in the Renaissance would never be that way. Would never have it would a just black be like, person. you know, white people and then, yeah. I don't know, slaves or something yeah. like that. Or You know what I love about Bridgerton personally? I feel like even though it's a representation of the, the 1800s mm. and it's a show set in the 1800s, mm. is that it sort of like merges like something, like modern elements. Like, like okay, music. like race and the music. I love it. And I'm just like, wow. So it's, it's like, like violin. Hip -hop. It's hip -hop. You know? Exactly. And if you don't know what we're talking about, guys, Bridgerton is on Netflix. So you, before even you continue watching this, because I feel like the episode will be a lot more relevant if you have actually watched yeah, Bridgerton. You can be a bit more proactive. You can be a bit yeah. more active, proactive, please. You can just go and download Netflix. So if you don't have Netflix already, just download it and then you can watch it mm -hmm. and then you can come in and like be able to understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the season is like it's a very short season. Mm -hmm. It's not like that long. It's yeah, eight no, episodes. It's eight episodes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. First, first season, second season, then you'll be able to understand the things that we are talking about. But we just thought because Bridgerton has been causing such a stir yeah. on social media. It's a cultural phenomenon. It's we a, can actually, say that. it is. It is. It is actually. It is. Yeah. And so we just thought we'd have a conversation about like the theme, some of the themes that we've noticed as we have been watching because it's like we literally were like on our phones just chatting and saying, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And we're like, wait, that's a conversation for That's TMI. a conversation. And, and that's what we are. do. We mm. bring the conversation which we probably do have secretly mm. or the things that make us feel a bit more like, I don't know, thought provoking Provoked, that's provoked, the word exactly yes. and we can have it with you guys exactly yeah. yeah so okay so should i start with mine go on so these are like i wouldn't say they are lessons as mm. such they're more observations uh observations I from ob observations. observations i was triggered Bridgeton. quite a bit but... i know mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know the funny thing is when i watch something mm. and i know you're watching the same thing i can always be like lydia, lydia i know lydia is, is at cringing <laughs> i know lydia is cringing Yuck. as we yucking speak. exactly I yes know lydia is uh -huh. let me tell you the first thing and this one I know already we are we are we are um accused of constantly being about sex here on TMI because it'd be about the dick. Sex podcast. But you know what we like we like sex yeah. and we have never made any apologies for it. Yeah. The number one thing you notice when you watch Bridgerton is how the men on the show are allowed to be hoes. They are in fact it's it's like encouraged. It's, encouraged. it's almost encouraged. Yeah. But the women, like literally, you are seen you are found in the same room as a man. Not even even not even you are touching. Not chaperone. Not even you, you are must you are, marry that second. Oh my god. Oh my god. You and must. I'm just I was so triggered. I was that happened twice. I think it happened once in season one mm -hmm. with Daphne. Oh, season and then two. in season two. Mm -hmm. I know. And I was just like, and we will try not to say the name so much so that you don't feel we don't, like, we don't, we don't spoil you as in well. case you've not watched it. So yeah. go and watch it. Mm -hmm. But I just felt so triggered by the fact that okay so men were allowed or are allowed because in some ways i feel like today it's still the same you know it's exactly the same way why are we being isolated yeah. because we are women who talk about enjoying sex mm. the fact that our podcast thrives on that thrives. is hilarious to me in 2022 crazy 
And the funny thing is that I feel like for me when I'm talking about sex, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel revolutionary at all. It just feels like a very normal thing. It's just another conversation. But guess it's what? It's just another I conversation. I think a lot of women talk about sex. Just but not in public. Not in public. Mm. No one is willing to sit down and be um, as open as the way maybe we are. Mm. But really, this is what you're saying to Akina Shiko and Shiro. Yeah, this is what you're she... saying. <laughs> not well, Shiko and Shiro. Yeah, Shiko no. and Shiro. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly what you're saying. So I just feel like yeah. we can still see that in 2022. So anytime you find yourself having issues with women being open about sex, ask yourself, am I a Bridgerton character? You know, am ask I, yourself. Is this and more is than this And more than just like talking about it, the actual having it, the actual having sex, like a single woman, <laughs> a single woman mm-hmm. who is not attached to anyone mm-hmm. could explore themselves sexually mm-hmm. Like, it's so frowned upon because, like, you'll be told, you know, they say, like, when you meet a guy and he asks you for your body count, mm-hmm. you should, like, divide it by three. But, like, a man, when you ask him, he'll multiply, he'll multiply it by multiply. three. So that it seems like he has more sexual prowess than he probably, you know, he probably doesn't have. Yeah. And, like, you should be looking like, oh, I'm modest. I haven't slept with that many people, even mm-hmm. though you know you've slept with 17. Yeah. I think, he yeah, first of all, we're not asking people body counts. Let's start there. Mm. W- where is this? No? Oh, yeah. Do you know your husband's body count? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Does he know yours? Yes. Yeah? Okay, yeah. No. Imagine. I don't I don't even the only reason asked. the only reason we know each mm. other is because when we were doing mm. um premarital counseling, mm. they told us like, you know, you have to write down the name of everyone we've slept Are with. Are you kidding I'm me? I'm not joking. I'm not joking. So we had to write, we asked for several full cups. Immediately. We wrote no. <laughs> Immediately, Immediately no. no. Why are you? Are you embarrassed? No. Are you embarrassed uh-uh. of all the men you slept even, with? It's just like Why? what are we? So first of all, some people will have to be writing for like three days. Is you some people? Oh no, some people. Me. There's some no, people in I'm question. Not some people. Oh, it's you not, know I'm ooh, not some people. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, I'm actually not some people. She's but, actually not some people. Yeah, yeah. but I do. I, I be do some I even people. care? Yeah, but anyway, so they said that if you've slept with someone, it means that you have formed some kind of like bond or something mm-hmm. like that, like mm-hmm. heart bond. So we had to like write it down, then you burn it together to just signify that we have let go of past loves and you know now you are now together kind of thing it was kind of romantic guys <laughs> it was kind of romantic i know it's sounding a little bit like rich yes <laughs> exactly but it was actually quite nice it was like to write down and see like wow, the openness i can see men. the intimacy in the it's openness. kind of nice exactly yeah and like just seeing like then even having the stories of like oh what happened with this one what happened mm. with this one it kind of was nice yeah hello Okay. Yeah. All right, fine. My one is one of the th- things that I saw, which was obviously really triggering, is like the boxing of women, right? I personally feel like women are either one thing or the other. That's how we're described, right? Mm. It's like we're not allowed to be in these nuances of, oh, she's very hardworking and successful, but she's very soft and sweet. No, we are, it's like we are, mm. it's like these, these hard, angry, successful women and then these housewives it's like wait hard why and angry. why are we hard and angry i, I know why are we mad you why know? is everyone mad exactly and i actually saw that i'm um, that theme a lot in this season mm. it's like it's either the okay let me say someone yeah eloise yes right or it's like i don't know one of the feather tone um girls mm. it's like there's so many people who are in between where they're not really intense and hard or whatever but they're also not super timid and lie on the ground there's yeah. there's so many things in between yeah. and when you're hearing somebody telling you what you should be mm. it's never be be a good mix of both it tends to be oh you because you are really loud and you're very aggressive mm. or you you're so timid it's they, there's never in between and i think many women stand somewhere in between that line yeah. and i feel like there should be more room for us to stand in between that mm. line mm. as opposed to always being grouped yeah. so drastically extreme do you feel like that's um, only in the Bridgerton world or do you feel like that exists today? I think that um, exists today as well. Actually, majority of the things I, I'm, I'm seeing, it's, it's the ones that provoked me most are the ones which I still mm. see now. Mm. Yeah? yeah? Like, and I still see that the same. I why was... are we the sex podcast? I know. Right? Why? <laughs> why? Why are we the why? sex? Guys, we talk about so many... We talk about <laughs> career. We've had an p- episode about career, right? And men's so vulnerability. We've been talking about... episode. Yeah. And yet... And yet, sex, sex podcast. podcast. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I mean, I feel like um, re- in recent times, I feel like society is starting to be a bit more accepting that women can be both. You know, when you have like a lot of like women CEOs and things like that, but for sure there is still some kind of like a, a kind of you thing. when you're it's when like, your mother every time is always people asking you about how you're dressed exactly, because you can't right? be sexy and be a and mother be a mother it's exactly too perplexing for yeah. people because you've been boxed in this box and you have to stay in that box. do you know what i find even yeah. more interesting about that is that more often than not it's women who are boxing other women in Oof. in today's society that's the thing yeah let me tell you something <laughs> i, I learned. learned let me tell you something i learned <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell me, sister friend. So, yeah. the reason why that is, is that mm. women who check other women to keep them in the norms of society, mm. usually, especially back in the day, used to get the brownie points for being the ones that are policing mm. others. Mm. And those are the women who we call today pick me. Yeah, pick So, me. you want brownie points as being the one who's just like, no, women ought to be like that. You are like yeah. the ruler of society amongst your women, mm. but it's because you believe that you get some favor. And yet you don't. And you and feel yet, bad that you don't. You feel bad, you feel that, bad you don't. that Actually, these days, I used to get mm. really frustrated when, mm. like, I would post something on my Instagram mm. and someone messages me and says, how, how, do you how do you think your kids will feel when they see this, when they, when they are grown up or something like that? I used to get really upset when someone mm. would say that. I would just mm. be like, hey, what's wrong with you? Mm. But now I actually just kind of feel sad for women who are so yeah. need in their mm. own ways of, like, you have to be like this, that I'm just like, oh, gosh, I hope you find freedom, babe. It's true. And I guess hope what? You find freedom. People, you remember that you were a child and now you're an adult. Adult. Yeah. If I found out that my mom in her 20s mm. was out here living life, I'm an adult. I will understand her as an adult. Mm. Like, so the idea that when my kids grow up, they'll still be seeing things from a childish point of view, they won't because they'll be women as well. Yeah. So they'll get it. Yeah. Mm. I feel like for me, an overarching theme in Bridgerton mm. for me is just the, the glaring double standards that there were men to women. And actually, the more I look at my points, I'm like, a lot of it is more just like yep. the double standards, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's like men are allowed to choose when they want to. To marry but for women it's like you know you're young now if you're not chosen now yeah. what's going to happen like 20 nobody... and 6 20 is oh, dust 20, first 20. it was 6 and 20 <laughs> 6 and 20 and I was like oh my god why are they treating her as if she's like 47 you know here at 31 I'm like it. you know I was Ooh, like child. yeah it mm. was it was I was just like this is so perplexing. Mm. The fact that the men could also just have careers mm -hmm. and be husbands, yep. but for women, it's like no, you can't. You want to be a writer. You want to be a, a painter. I you know. want to. I mean, it's like, what's happening? It's so hard, and yeah. that kind of um that still happens today, but in a different way. So, mm. for example, even when you're allowed to work as a girl, a lot mm. of families are so controlling around mm. what the girl does mm. very controlling mm. around when she moves out who she is with like what she does with her money mm. somebody dm me the other day and they were just like they don't want to tell their parents how much they earn because mm. or, like it becomes they're they're controlled far more mm. than the boy the boy is like outside by surgery where nobody even cares if he ate or whatever mm. but the girl is still being timed to be at home at six o'clock oh god you know yeah um so it it, it, it happens like still a bit yeah. but maybe not as much as yeah. they used to but you know what i appreciate about today today mm. i feel like in our society right now when a woman messages me to complain about you know let's say like freedom she's not being given mm. at home i'm always like you have the power but you're choosing not to activate the power mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i feel like mm -hmm. in bridgerton times you literally could not actually oh, get a job so as a woman you could not mm -hmm. you know but now if you're a 23 year old mm -hmm. and you have a job and you're earning money mm -hmm. and you have decided to stay in your parents house then you're the one who has decided mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i get it that it's like maybe you've been raised to be like okay no you must a not disobey your parents way, yeah. or whatever but at some point you just have to take back the power mm -hmm. because i feel like if you continue to live in that like oh my parents have said or oh, they have done this mm -hmm. no one has actually held a gun to your head and told you you mm -hmm. must stay here you must do this mm -hmm. and i get that it's hard to sometimes stand up to your parents stand up to society mm. and you know do the things mm. or say the things that mm. you're not encouraged to do but at some point you just have to yeah at some point you have yeah. to the same with you mm. if you had listened to everyone saying oh don't move in with your partner mm. or don't do this mm. don't don't change careers you've already studied law mm. why don't you just i mean at well, some point you have right. to there is yeah. always someone exactly. saying something at, about what you're doing that's it and i feel yeah. like with women there will always be someone mm. making some sort of decision or mm. some sort of opinion about what you're doing you just yeah. have to now be like okay no this is what i'm doing anyway yeah. you know yeah um the other day when somebody um had, had messaged me about like working with something i had shared about you need to have courage mm. but i realized courage kind of comes easy to me and it might be that's why Even me that's why yeah. you might be seeing it like sometimes you just have to you just have but, to just well, get up and when hit. courage is something that's so far away yeah, from what you're used to or your personal your personality yeah it's like asking someone to jump off the bridge it's that scary for them whereas right. to you it would just be like okay so this is annoying do. i'll do <laughs> So you just do it. So you just do, and so then, you just, and then yes, yeah, you're and that's right. That's why we are the sex mm, podcast. That is why because it's of us. this. Yeah. So mm. another theme, um, which I saw me and Joe have definitely argued about this, like a good thirty minutes, literally, um, is toxic ideas on love mm. um so the idea obviously as um the way we've always been taught even from fairy tales everything it's always been oh and then he'll walk into the room and then you know everything mm. will be i don't know the lights will go off and time will stand still or whatever whereas i personally don't believe that that's the defining 
the defining factor of mm. what love is. Whereas jo Joanne, which I understand, is an advocate for we should we should we should aspire to yeah. that kind of yeah. love. So when um there's a point where I'll say it another name as well, Daphne's um explaining what love mm, is to Anthony. To Anthony. And yeah. the way she described it is just like I get that. I get that. Like Stacy, right? Mm -hmm. But there's many times, <laughs> there's many times I have felt that, and it pans out. All I was feeling is the familiarity of chaos from my dynamic with my dad, or it's like the feeling of my attachment still being activated because you are emotionally unavailable, and I'm an anxious person. Mm -hmm. there, Can you explain yeah. what exactly it was she was describing? How she described so it? So she describes that when you're first of all, one the thing that stood out for me is that when you're in the room with that person, it's like you're having to fight for their for your for your mouth not to touch. I was like, Daphne. Which is true. <laughs> You don't feel that when you're married. Why are you fighting? I mean, yeah. I feel like, yes, I really it's want like, you. Yeah. Okay, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, let me tell you this, yeah, guys. And, all and I'm saying. I'm referring to not in like at all the time, but like at, at the point of when attraction. You know. Yeah, when, you're, when you when know. You're getting to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I personally had that same feeling with Mike, I said, and I shared that. That's one of the reasons why I didn't initially get with him because I had learned that it had more to do with what was happening with me, um, like in my mind, more than actually was in love but joanne jo joanne feels like i am removing say my name sorry morugi believes i am removing the <sighs> of fairy tale out of life exactly and i feel like it's because she was in a traumatic relationship before that mm. she feels like if you start feeling this passion and mm. this fire that that actually is a red flag as opposed to it being a positive thing i personally feel like you like there has to be some sort of like fire i agree and, that, and in that mm -hmm. initial attraction to this person mm -hmm. it shouldn't be because lydia said what she feels when she's with mike is safe and calm mm -hmm. but for you to even get to this place where you feel safe and calm mm -hmm. there has to have been that fire that attraction there of like was. oh my god i mm -hmm. really want to just yeah. i mean for you to have let him in your house the first <laughs> night the first night you met him there has to have been some sort of fire and you see yeah. i feel like that fire is the is the it's the entrance to allowing all these other these other forms of like the way love will show itself in your relationship to come out you know what i'm saying and i feel like in fact within the context of bridgerton i see why it's so it was so important for her to actually describe love that way because she there's could so tell. much yeah and there was mm. so much emphasis placed on like you know what kind of family you know is it how dutiful will she be able to be how mm. you know perfect is she because of his position and everything yeah. so i feel like the in fact her drawing more importance to like the fire and the passion mm. as dramatic as it may have been <laughs> As dramatic, uh, but I oh, would say that. That day. <laughs> you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, mm. "A woman, a woman will last after her husband." It says something like that, mm. which usually is quite controversial. But I feel like when I'm with my husband, I do feel like I last over him. But I feel you like know. you last. Like last is a okay. <laughs> wow. Pause this <laughs> production <laughs> because. I... No, I I mean it like in a like you know I feel. I feel I, I feel like I feel as passionately about him now as I did when I met him, you know? I so 100% agree with I that. And I feel like you know that, that. Exactly. And I feel like that feeling is what keeps me going in times when, like, times are hard. You know, that at least there's this, like, I know that there's that fire, that passion. But to Lydia, that's a red flag. No. See, to Lydia, it's a red yeah. flag to love somebody. Joe <laughs> believes that because I am saying that there should be, there's other things that are a bigger factor as far as war love is than that fire. But how I would you know that if you've not experienced that love without the fire? Because for Mike, you have the fire, right? Yeah, so let me mm -hmm. tell you. The reason why I say that is not to say that that thing is not needed. Mm. It's a good thing. Mm. It's a good thing to have because actually, honestly, it's like what separates him and other people would you say would How? you say it's one of the most important things would you say it's it's, it's in fact pretty high up Oof. there in the oh, top see, three that's the things. thing yeah the problem is yeah i felt it i felt that fire that you're speaking of and i was actually being set on fire it was really more like my house was on fire more than i was feeling a fire with oh, him I right see. and mm. because i feel like so many women get stuck in that feeling of like you know he you, that's why you hear people saying he's such an amazing da -da -da. Yeah. and then the list oh, yeah. is so incredible like what's amazing about this person because there's this thing that you're saying is what we call love right so my what i'm offering here is an option for us women right mm. that you can't find somebody and what you do feel 
is calm what you can't find somebody who it feels it just feels good to be around them more than it feels like i want to rip them apart and it's still be love so i'm saying that there's an option it's not just that this is the only way that people can experience love i feel like we are too different that we can experience love in this one way and funny enough the feeling i felt with mike i feel like initially might have been a little toxic really it was too much yeah oh i know I, for sure it, it was toxic there was this one night we were at this house party and do you want me to continue the rest of the story would, would you like you want to tell story? <laughs> Okay, oh, ah. yeah, story <laughs> okay, 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 let's do okay, okay, story. Okay, okay, let's do yeah, story. Yeah, it's, okay. it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but anyway, for me, I yeah. think I, I do see where you're coming from. Yeah. But I feel like mm. what I wish for for women is that they're able to find somebody who embodies both those things. Yes. That you feel the fire and the passion. And he's but, also good. But he's also good. A good person. Not like a DM of like, he beats me. He, I mean, he locks me out of the house, How but you know, it's passionate. Or, no. Yeah. We're not like, sacrificing it all for passion. We're, we're not, not doing that yeah, anymore. There's, there's somewhere in between where you can have goodness and also the fire. And yeah. you don't agree that you should be with someone just because they're a nice person. Yeah. Because then what? I know. Then you know, what? my dad, when, when I was getting married, my dad, he, my dad's advice to us was just like, you know, you can go through so many challenges in life, but in, in the end, the only criteria for marriage is love. So back Ooh, then when he said it, DRS, problematic. DRS too, DRS, <laughs> daddy DRS. Yeah, but back when he said it, I found it, I was just like, wow, dad, you know, because like hearing a man <laughs> say that the only criteria for marriage is love, you know, like that was when I brought Zach to meet him and him saying that it just felt so like, wow, dad, you know, yeah. But obviously since then, I've just, having now experienced marriage, I realized that actually the only criteria is not, many, there are many factors. Many, and many also factors. the thing is, yeah, <laughs> men benefit most. From, from, from that this ideology. Love. Yeah. Men benefit right. most. Yeah. Because it's rare that you are the one who's all over town beating him. Yeah. But he's like, but, but the pizzazz. Love, but the, yeah. the pizzazz. Ooh, it's yeah. never ever yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. It's mostly us. It's mostly us. Who suffer under that. Yeah. And that's why it's better to ascertain so that there's a higher criteria except for, mm. but babe, you don't feel the passion that I feel. Mm? Mm -mm. I do. Mm. But I also feel the heat of the chlamydia you gave me. <laughs> I feel that heat. Yeah. I feel that heat too. Ooh, that sounds like it's come from a deep place. Do you want to share? No. Share I'm with done. the classroom. I'm done with oh, sharing. Don't share that. Mm -mm. <laughs> Your thing is here. Oh. My what? It's pretty that way. Oh, sorry. I didn't even notice that there was yeah. like, oh, wow. Shimmer. It's about time. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. <clears throat> there was something else that came up in the, in the um, show that I was just like, it made me just think. So there was a point where Anthony um, starts explaining that the reason he doesn't want to marry for love is because of how his mom and his dad loved each other. And, you know, she felt so much pain mm. when the dad died, mm -hmm. which first of all, how he died was just so fucking creepy. I was just like, but, you know, back in the day, as much as people were just like, you know, we shouldn't have vaccines because back in the day, people yeah. existed. they died because of a bee sting. <laughs> because That's why, because they didn't know sting, anything. Right? They knew nothing. <laughs> and so it made me it made me ask myself, you know how the whole aspect of like, would you rather um, have loved someone and then lose them mm. in whatever way, whether they died or you guys broke up yeah. or whatever, or would you rather to just not have loved them at all? I answer. You may go ahead and answer, Lydia. I would rather love and lose 20 times over. Hey, <clears throat> not me. I know we, we talked about this about mm. like go, going through a heartbreak. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I would rather love and do so. You prefer not to love. Yeah. You know, the mm. thing is that for me, I've never really experienced like a real heartbreak. You know, I've yeah. never like mm. been like heartbroken. But think of such. the worst pain you felt like in relation to another human being, maybe triple that. <gasps> oh no, not triple. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And even when I see like these babes who like DM us and like they're going through so much and they're like, oh, about this heartbreak. Mm. And you see, my first instinct is just tell them, she just. Just stop feeling it then. You know, just get over it. Kind of like thing. Because I've never, like, it just seems really painful. It is. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> would you want, like, me, I wouldn't. It's actually, mm -hmm. that what the studies have shown that when you get a heartbreak, is the equivalent to feel the same kind of pain as a broken leg. That's the level of intensity that you feel. It's almost physical. Yeah, and me, I'm just like, does love really qualify then? As in, like, is it like that sweet? Is it that nice? Yeah, love that is that nice. Is love is that nice i will fall in love 20 times over and i will bear that pain i will and guess what when you realize that you don't actually die mm. it may feel like a broken leg but it's not yeah i feel like i'll go through it again you would yeah love is so beautiful okay. love i think is the only thing i feel like it's it's worth everything 
despite everything I just said, by the way, yeah. love is important. Like genuine, true love. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It's worth everything. I used to think that too. I think feel like until I became a mother and mm. then now I've felt like what it feels like to be loved by someone who literally loves you so unconditionally. Like, mm. so no one can love you the way a child, your own child loves you. Yeah. You know, so mm. I feel like feeling that, I feel like, okay, that one I would sacrifice for that kind of love. Mm. And even like, okay, I guess the love I have with my husband, maybe it's just that I've not seen it in context of like, I don't have it anymore. Mm. But I guess maybe even me, I would rather ha- love and lose of than... Of course. And those maybe. babies you had with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Maybe he contributed. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Oh, he was there. He was yeah. there. He was he there. He was there when the babies were being conceived. Was, I guess so. That, yeah. that, that was nice Certainly. of him to be mm. there. Mm. Um. So my next <laughs> one nice. is this hard to get thing, mm. right? Majority of um the um of Bridgerton is just like you know okay this person is like you know she's hard and she's like you know argumentative and she's pushy and stuff. But at the end. Oh, she Should gets she's she's fallen. She's rewarded, oh. right? And actually, majority of the time, you wait. What do you mean she's rewarded? So that means he ends up with you. Don't know what I just said. Oh, what did you say? Exactly. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more episode of yeah. Bridgerton to watch, and I actually like I I really I'm looking forward to getting home tonight <laughs> with my wine, and I really want. Don't spoil for me. I won't spoil for you. But the point is, okay. I feel like the idea that the the woman who puts up the most walls is the one who's rewarded with I don't know the guy or whatever at the end. You're 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 seen to have more value mm. when you make somebody work so hard. And I feel like the only th- reason why that is is because people don't trust that a woman has the freedom to actually just like you from the beginning. It's like okay, I've gone with you for like two or three dates. I like you. Oh no, you didn't. You didn't make me chase it. You didn't work hard. Enough. What is that about? And I can't stand that. Wow. I can't stand that. I feel like the way it should is that a ma- a woman has as much sense of choice to be able to choose you as you have them. But the idea is the man should convince you. Mm. You're not of value because I didn't work hard to convince you that I'm I'm a good man. What, why, why can't I see that you're a good man and just okay. like you? Well, I think I disagree with you in that one. Yeah? Yeah. Go on. I feel like... I feel like, mm. okay, it's not ideal mm. that I should have to like pretend to be playing hard to get when mm. actually I already like you and I want you to yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. But I feel like just naturally, because of the way that society has brought up our men, unfortunately, mm. I feel like just naturally they, I, I, I prefer to have to have the opportunity or the ability to mm. be able to determine that you should work hard for me or now I've decided that That's you the should. That's choice. Which as is, opposed yeah. to mm. value already being placed mm. at w- whichever way you decide to make that choice. Mm. I think it's fine. I feel like there are some people who are just like, I won't have, I don't know, I won't go to your house after six days. I won't mm. have sex with you after three months. I won't, whatever all of those things are, wherever mm. you feel like your mark is for mm. a man to deserve you or whatever, I feel like that's amazing for you to have the choice but for it to be determined already that if this one like for example all the women who the um what's it nani was having sex with they're women Anthony. right yeah mm-hmm. they're women who he's having sex with yeah but those are in the bin they yeah, don't count they, yeah because Ooh. them they're, first yeah. all, they're allowed to even have a choice to be that way but question mm. just to counter that mm. is the women like now um edwina sharma yeah who is now the diamond she mm. doesn't play hard to get oh Edwina, she doesn't play hard to get. Like the women who are trying to be chosen mm. in the courtship season, mm. they're not playing hard to get. But they're not allowed to do anything. They oh, can't right. kiss they you. Can't even, they yeah. can't be alone with you. Oh, right. It's like okay, all of these fine. things are to preserve my value because mm. my value lies in not being touched. Actually, my value yeah. lies in you not interfering with me. Yeah. Actually, the, the whole aspect, the whole thing of value is the thing which it's every value. time I watch it, yeah. Even that is even, value. The even hard the, to get thing is still value. Right? And even the yeah. fact that, okay, now the queen has said, you are the most valuable suddenly now you're you are the whole the, the whole um element of like external parties determining what your value is based As on women. your looks based yeah. on like i mean god forbid you are fat and ugly no like god forbid Who? i feel so bad for penelope every time i watch and this i love show. her i, I, I love her like, i will she's marry you i will smart. marry you i know <sighs> and she's funny yeah i just oh my god Oh my god, yeah. I just I love her so. Actually, I think she's my favorite character. I love her so much. Yeah, yeah I feel like she good. she's a good balance of like you are a kind person, you're present, you're existent, you yeah. have a brain of your own, you're smart. I feel like she's a really good in between of all of these other extremes that are going on. Yeah. So yeah, that's mine for me. The idea, the hard to get thing that's mm. already placed, the value that's placed there. 
um, mm -hmm. in a woman already because I'm not allowed to decide. Even when you have sex with someone, it's like, no, you should have waited. Yeah. Because why and should now, you, why now, are you choosing yeah. to have, what? You're making a decision about to having sex with me and I haven't and worked first to convince night, you. Yeah. Yeah. What so actually is quite yeah. annoying. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that. Um, uh, this whole thing of age and marrying, that's another theme that we saw in, in um, Bridgerton, which we've had. Lydia had a had a live about age differences. That live was really interesting. Yeah. It was so interesting. Seeing people's comments was super interesting. Please yeah. go check it out on her page, Lydia KM, <laughs> yeah. if you haven't already. Yeah. But the whole element of like on the show, you mm. notice that the men who are in the courtship season mm. are are significantly older because they have been allowed to like do whatever it is that they want and then now come and get married. Even but for the courtship, they're even still in doing whatever they want. Even literally, they are doing whatever they want throughout. But the women, it's like as soon as they have reached moderate fertility, like literally, Edwina seems like 14 years old or something. Yeah, like, they're very young. Really, really sure. young. And for yeah. her, it's like because now you have reached this age. And we had a whole episode of this, mm. obviously, the whole aging anxiety mm -hmm. kind of thing. The whole element of like now you've reached the age of being chosen, you have to be chosen before you've expired because yeah. God forbid you expire. It's true. God forbid and you, you expire. expire now what yeah now what do we do with now you, babe? Do your eggs how <laughs> the dust <laughs> what the, do you do with the your dust eggs? that is your eggs that was previously your eggs i know yeah i yeah. know that's um Ridiculous. i feel like that's actually let me tell you i feel like there's some biology that goes behind that mm. you know when are you quote unquote ripest or when are you most fertile so a lot of the themes um are used to be surrounded around that it's like yeah. you're best when you're younger blah blah mm. blah as a woman whereas for whatever reason men are better when they're older because they've had more time to be successful etc mm. there's some um, validity to that but i feel like um we can't we can't keep holding on to some things which don't benefit us mm. and really um and then arguing against some which don't benefit us, right? If we want a sense of equity in that, we have we have the same amount of choice as men. We can't then hold on to some archaic views which don't benefit some women, mm. right? You've you've petered, like I'm 31 now. Now what? So I die or what? Yeah. You know, it's like we, that, that means it closes the gap mm. for the amount of opportunities that we have to be able to have full lives beyond these time limits that are set for us you mm -hmm. know and yeah so i feel like you have to be open about all of them yeah. all of the all of these views you can't decide pick and choose yeah, yeah. and we've, we got such great feedback on that episode that we did about aging anxiety like i literally there were women who are 21 20, i was like no if you <laughs> i feel so much better than watch this because than i'm that turning 21 <laughs> and like i just didn't know what to do with my old age i know it was it's so it was like it's so breathy. yeah and yet the same way that someone else who was 50 is watching us and saying you're 30 and you're complaining about being old like are you yeah. serious are you I serious know. it's the same way and yeah. the older you get the more you see women are getting more and more liberated later yeah yeah and before um, maybe because we didn't know them we didn't know, we didn't know yeah, 40 year old exactly. or 31 year old but it's just like wait i'm seeing people turning women for turning 40 i'm just like hi i know Whereas and looking so good i know but then back then when i was 21 it's just like wow you're 30. imagine good. Ew, that's so where old, the husband right? shits nothing yeah yeah I god you now I look, look crazy. Where are you? You're here. Um, do I have um a last one? I had one last one. Go on. So the whole show, if you watch Bridget on if you haven't, you should go and mm. get Netflix mm. and definitely watch it. Mm. Is the whole the whole aspect of like courtship and the fact that there's this select group of like ladies mm -hmm. who let's say these men who want to who want to get married mm. will choose from. Mm. And it made me think, like, do you feel like that's easier or do you feel like that's harder? Because I feel like right now there's so much choice. Even though Paul would like to make you believe that there's not that much choice, there's They're so much definitely. choice. You could literally yes. date anybody mm -hmm. you could literally date anybody mm -hmm. but the fact that here these like this select they said these 10 are the ones that you can choose from to marry i feel like that makes kind of like makes things easier almost like the way indians have like arranged marriages which i know is not ideal because you want to give full choice but sometimes i feel like too much choice is a bad thing it is a bad thing yeah. it's actually one of the reasons why like divorce is higher that's not the only reasons before yeah. you come at me um that's why it's harder to have relationships because we're always by the time it's you something by better. my morning before you send me my morning text maybe Somebody my DMs is like six you know i saw someone say yeah it's treat 20, your girl well because we're in her dms and we've got money Ooh, lord Ooh, lord <laughs> lady joanne lady lydia you know and it's true by it the way is. so it's, it's so like true. it's because there's so much options and so much choice you get to a point it's just like why should I? You can't even familiar anything. There's no familiarity. Yeah. There's no. You're working on your relationship. Why? Right. And when there are Steve a million over here who's going to pick you up. Mm. But then we always forget. Is like there's there's value in. So I heard someone say there's value in longevity. 
there's something that. that comes deeper with someone you're with longer the mm. way they know you the layers that they know you that you're never gonna get with a million first experiences yeah you know and people which does not mean you familiar a bad experience just absolutely of not we're talking there's about a the goodness of the goodness if yes. there's no goodness yeah, all you're just seeing is suffering for long mm -mm. exactly we but don't in, want that. as you're growing in love as you're growing deeper in love with someone mm. getting to know them going through things there's something there's something you are experiencing that somebody in their first year of marriage cannot or, or will not never feel, feel i get that there's I some get value that. in longevity that we are not appreciating anymore yeah, yeah i absolutely agree with that and yeah. i feel like the whole element of thinking that there'll always be somebody who might who is more handsome than your man mm. or richer than your man or whatever always but I think be trust me yeah yeah See, there is be. They will always be though. Hey, what Mike, did J. Cole agreed, say? Quickly. No, mm. J, J. Cole said <laughs> there will always be something out there better than yours. So you won't see oh, until yeah, you appreciate so yours. Until you appreciate yours. Yeah. And, and you'll only know yours deeply enough to mm. be able to appreciate it if you're actually putting in the effort as opposed to like looking, looking what's yeah, out there looking, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I personally feel like these as much as sometimes they say putting your eggs in one basket is like problematic, mm. there's something you get out of being whole in one thing, yeah. being fully in one thing yeah. that you probably don't get when your when you're hands whatever, yeah. and feet are all over the uh, place. Everywhere, exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, I, I, can't I, I mean, as as women who I mean are very vocal about you know women having their space in the world, there's yeah. many things about Bridgerton that are just like, Arr! and that's I think that's mm. why we like it. I think because so. for me being able to look to watch a show like that mm. and be able to appreciate how far we have come, yeah. the freedoms how far we you have, come. Yeah, yeah, the freedoms Actually, we, we have. still have way more freedoms than that. We yeah, have, for exactly. Sure. Even even something as basic as dressing. Yeah, you know something like being able to. Walk walk out on the street and yeah. not like your whole life is not just focused on marriage. I feel like being able to appreciate that is what I love most about Bridgerton. Um, another thing that I, I think the reason why I loved it, I've always loved um series or movies that are set like way back in the day because there was a simplicity to things. Oh, yeah. There was simplicity to things, as in you wake up. I don't know the the maids. They they clean you or whatever. We are assuming you're rich. Sorry, yeah. you um, are black. So uh, you are you are you'll be in the field. Assuming somewhere. I was black oh. back then, Ooh, you yeah. never know okay, what fine. life was. You're in. right. You're right. So let's mm. say I was Daphne, right? You okay, wake up, Daphne. you're bathed, Daffy. Mm -hmm. You're bathed <laughs> or whatever, and then you just wake up. I don't know. You eat. You yeah. take a walk with you Lady Joanne. You, know? you have tea. You know, it was a lot more. As much as many things were more complicated, yeah. there is a simplicity to that life that mm. i really enjoy seeing it's yeah. like now you wake up oh instagram there's so there much it it's noisy there's now so much. what you know you know there's so many things I that agree. come with today yeah. and technology and the advancements that we've had that complicates life a lot more mm. so it feels nice to watch things being way more simpler yeah. you know men talking from their heart and you know talking about love poetry and you know there's so many things that will be a bit more simpler that that kind of makes me feel at peace yeah me too it. actually you're watching sometimes just for yourself just smiling just i like, know like ah, ah, and then you know like i don't so the birds nice. are singing exactly and stuff. talk about these dresses <laughs> do how their I hair know. is whatever and it's just it's just really nice guys it's simple. if you want this feeling and you have not yet watched bridgerton highly recommend that you get netflix we highly recommend. and go and watch it in fact if you've not watched it i'm so envious because now you have season one and season two to watch Oh my god! I know, and when you go back, I, it's like when you watch something, you're just like, I wish I didn't see it. I wish I didn't see, it so I can see it again. I know, so I can you see have it that, again. you have that desire. You have it, guys. So I go know. and watch, and we want to hear all your comments mm. about everything. We can give spoilers. So if you're watching this, by the time you've reached here already, you've seen so you've had so many spoilers. I feel like. Oh my goodness! First right? of all, it's like this is one of these shows that you just have to watch in the first you just have couple to, of yeah. days. It so came out on Saturday, so yeah, this is Wednesday. Exactly. Let's discuss mm. in the comments, guys, and mm. you can DM us on Instagram, TMI Podcast. K E or Murugi Muni or Lydia Every time I talk about this show on my page, people are just like, don't give us spoilers. I'm like, now you, if you've not watched Trudeau, now what? Yeah, Trudeau. you have enough time, guys. It's Wednesday. Exactly. Do it. So after that riveting conversation, you know, the whole British Bridgerton is in the, riveted. It's lovely. <laughs> riveting. And you know what's funny is that it's set in the UK where Lydia grew up. <laughs> did you meet these people? I did. did I you, did. The, I know the, Penny. I you know, know Penny. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, guys, we wanted to read out some of the comments that we got from our last episode, which is the one that we did with Shiv. It was, it was, I mean, I didn't find the conversation that polarizing, but obviously some people <laughs> found it. We you got a someone, scathing got a, email, a scathing yeah. email about how the person was very disappointed with our views um, as African women. Ooh. 
it was too long. I oh didn't read gosh, all of it. It yeah. was a lot. But you know, that actually tells me that we are doing something right. Because you see, I the like point it. of TMI is that we want to have conversations that matter about yeah. how messy life is right now. Yeah. And the reality is that I feel like we are growing up in an age where there's so many opinions going everywhere about so many different mm -hmm. things. And I should be able to appreciate that you have a different mm -hmm. viewpoint and I have a different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. We yeah. can just survive. And funny enough, yeah. I realize a lot of people aren't around people who they have different views. Yeah. You guys are with the same kind of people who, who regurgitate your own views yeah that's why it's so weird like oh my god you guys disagree and like you're fine and you're it's fine, like yeah. because my views aren't even necessarily me exactly. and your views aren't necessarily you. views. just like it's i have just... a view let's talk about it and it doesn't make yeah. you who you are also yeah. when we admit like now for example joe admitted in the last episode that mm. she may have some toxic views yeah. in that she towards doesn't masculinity yeah towards yeah. masculinity mm. her saying that isn't that yes that's the right way to do it but <laughs> <laughs> so sorry guys i just farted twice no, I think it's a. I think that was. A, I couldn't hold it any longer, guys. It had been like forty minutes. I apologize. <laughs> well, the fans have come in handy. Ooh, my farts don't smell. Have you seen me? God, my farts definitely don't smell. Anyway, as I was saying, Joanne, just because she has those views. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so um, Joanne's point of view that she has, she might have some to toxic views, not to say that that's what she necessarily stands for and she's working to be different. It's just what it is. Mm. And I feel like us being open and honest is not to come here and say, yes, we have all these politically correct views mm. and that's not what we want to do this for. We yeah. want to do this with, I admit my bias, I admit that I have maybe some toxic views, mm. but we are open to conversation because yeah. that's life. I also find it mm. so curious how people on social media will always be like, you know, as a content creator, we want you to be we want you to you to be the real you you know don't pretend to be perfect but then when you admit Ooh! or you show that you're in fact not perfect or you make any kind of mistake or any kind of comment suddenly you're it's out. like oh, how dare you it's like okay we can't that's a double standard it is a, that's double, a standard. double standard i remember somebody who was crucified for showing like their home and apparently their tv was too small yeah Ooh. but if you only show that you're yeah. wealthy then it's your problem everything's a problem whatever yeah. mm -hmm. geez anyway so some of the comments that we're reading is from the youtube um page but also if you're listening on the podcast we appreciate you just that we can't see your comments right now um rose you said uh my happiness hormones are always at 100 on wednesdays oxytocin dopamine and serotonin because of you ladies wow thank you okay thanks rose um faith vu yanzi you're mm -hmm. saying i like how shiv doesn't excuse the quote unquote get home angry situation and yeah. point um and point out the need for guys to own their pain allow it to settle and communicate it without projecting it mm. this was um such an awesome whole um as such a wholesome conversation in general men who are proactive about advocating for social justice are life we mm. need we need more men to set up like this man i love that Ethan love was that. saying that um someone was saying that this man he doesn't At represent he, he doesn't represent the, he's like a one percent of the whatever yeah i mean I the, the, he's an ev he's evolved Definitely, so that means yeah. that there are so many there are aspects of him that are go not going to be like the masses but i personally feel like i try my best to be an advocate of what is or like how we where we need to go to the point of maybe i don't have men saying things like men should be in the kitchen around me mm. maybe i don't notice yeah. that they are not all the way back there because i'm not having it exactly maybe <laughs> i'm not having yeah, i feel it. like i feel like let's say for example my man mm. he's like a crossbreed in between mm like what where she is mm. and like a traditional man yeah because like sometimes he'll say something which I, something which i'll just be like wow what a backward archaic traditional view. yeah archaic yeah. like well, other time mm. he said something like mukeni you know she likes to jump around and he's like mukeni you know girls shouldn't have skinned knees and i was like where are you from as opposed to like who, you know yeah. yeah and so i was like and then when i said it like babe that's actually you can't just say that about girls because like mm -hmm. anyone can have skin it's not like that's going to determine mm -hmm. her value and it's like yeah i mean i just don't mean it from like that point of view but then it gives me an opportunity to like now tell him okay but babe you know you say things like that it can make her feel this way and mm -hmm. then grow up thinking that her value yep. is in her knees and now knees. that you know her knees her knees you now know she doesn't want to show her knees girl yeah God. Um, i yeah. personally feel mm -hmm. like i mike is an is somebody who's open to hearing i guess same like yeah that. It's, open it's more to like learning. i can see your conditioning yes but mm. you are open to seeing a different perspective which i love and knowing that mm. you're with um a feminist i mean i think you have to you're gonna but, need to yeah, you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to. Uh -huh. um rose you said a great topic especially in today's for today's young women and men understanding each other's gender in terms of relationships is critical in today in today's world and then she said thank you for this thank you ladies for this and to my son shiv mm. 
my son she's <laughs> well spoken and with a oh, lot of sensitivity no it's not his oh. mom but obviously she's an older lady I, oh. and you know what i love about in between us we literally have like really old people who watch tmi yeah. and really young people who watch tmi and we love it and it's a family we love it and we love that for us yeah yeah um caro um Gachanja, you're saying wow what a great topic this was i have learned so much from this and now know how to create that safe space where my man feels free to open up to me mm-hmm. and share what's going on with his life i've also learned that i need to do more listening than just hearing oh yeah i learned a lot in that episode as well yeah. especially when he said that um instead of being like sitting down and be like let's talk about our feelings I know. you should do something that maybe he enjoys so that he feels a little less on guard yeah. when talking about something that he's not usually comfortable talking about. Yeah, I've told yeah, Zach to watch that epi- the episode mm-hmm. so that he can at least... Sometimes he starts watching, then like maybe like 10 minutes in, he's already switched to another video, really? which I'm just like, Zach, really? Really, Ouch. Zach? Do you know what like, in between us? I know. I, I, yeah. I don't even know when the last time Mike watched a full Does episode. He, yeah. he says he watched it in secret, <laughs> but did you? <laughs> did you? Actually, did you? so we should start quizzing them. We yeah, should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mian, you said Shiv sitting there in compliments for the first five minutes. Wholesome. Is it wholesome by the way that we should show men the same kind of love that we are always craving to be shown because we always imagine that them they don't want to be complimented but they want i feel like i, like, I feel I think, like we are complimenters yeah i think so yeah, yeah. i feel like we are major complimenters and men feel so good when they are complimented every time i say here george you look nice he's always blushing george is our production guy yeah he loves to be complimented yes he likes to mm. you look great george so nice, so nice that black t-shirt oh my god he's exceptional his i know <laughs> Woo! wow exceptional black t-shirt never seen one um, like that marianne before. jaggy you're mm-hmm. saying shiv says people talk during sex me i just want to have a snack and take a nap i was really after after that. sex yeah, yeah yeah i was like wait wait people don't talk afterwards yeah. but yeah. you know it depends i think it depends on when you're having the sex you know yeah? yeah, if it's a quickie, like we're not gonna say them. Yeah, like, we're so going to now. It's not. Let's not pretend it was romantic. It was it romantic? It was it's more, true. you know, transactional. <laughs> Lydia has an issue with that. Lydia has oh an God issue. God for Lydia, every God. sexual experience has to be about intimacy. That's how I feel about. I feel you. like deeply, it's always about intimacy. Just because you know, I want you to give it to me, doggy, and call me, you know, your bitch, doesn't mean it's not intimate. <laughs> oh, it's just it's just a it different is. kind it's of just intimate. A different intimacy, <laughs> Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lady Lydia. Oh, Apologies. Oh. Did you say doggy? Oh, doggy. No, doggy. doggy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I bet you production are going to make that in the snippet. I know. Yeah. Oh, Barely, she's, always, she's always looking. That was minute what? Minute 37. She's That's writing the one. it down. She's written it down. Great. Anyway, thank you guys so much for the feedback you gave us on that last episode. We hope that you are continuing to enjoy our episodes. And you know, we, we are always striving to bring you content that you love, but also that we enjoy yes, actually making. 100%. We, yeah. um, guys, we love you. And every time I read that back, I'm just like, that's a person. That's Imagine another person. a whole person. That's another person. Another person that we've affected positively. Yes. We appreciate you guys. That's the fun. They said, in Bridgerton, they said, you've got to find yourself on the bosom to, to draw, draw attention. attention. Yeah. You Georgie. didn't give me the brief of what, <laughs> what I'm supposed to wear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, we didn't give you the brief. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Terrible. All their bosoms are up to Literally. their head. I know, what? but don't touch me. And why? Why are the, Why is the waistline of the dresses are all just under the boobs? I'm like, we can't it even gives me see so much stress. But I guess because me? of what, what was preferred then is just boobs. Oh yeah, I yeah, guess so. That's it. Whereas today it's just like so you have you boobs, have to so have what? first of all, yeah. you, you, if you have a waist <laughs> in this day and age, mm, mm, unmarriable, <laughs> unmarriable. <laughs> anyway, guys, t- we want to do a TMI talk, and this mm. is where you guys send us your DMs about any dilemmas that you might have about money, about family, and we do our best to share with mm, this mm. um there's there's one there's one which is coming that's hot do you remember which one? Oh, yeah oh god oh yes. life changer Woo! one is coming one is coming but yes. anyway um and you can dm us on any of our pages yeah. Mungi Muni or Lydia KM or definitely our TMI, TMI podcast, podcast. Mm. as you can imagine we do get quite a bit but we try our best if we don't even bring it to the show we are definitely going to respond mm. privately um okay so this one says hi ladies love all the way from Zambia. Okay. Hey, Zambian queen. Mm-hmm. Um, all I should say, and I should say that I love you guys. If you if you need to address this story time, I don't know how you will narrate it. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. Um, let's just do it anyway. I've dated mm-hmm. a guy for two years now, and we're still going strong. I'm in my mid mid twenties, mm-hmm. and the edge to m- get married to my partner is strong. Mm. Oh, the, the urge. urge. But if ah, she did okay, write edge. edge. Okay, I understand. But urge, mm. the urge to get married. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're in different countries, mm. but he talks of coming back home because 
of me so he says he wants us to cohabit but i'm like no no i need marriage before we stay together anyway i got to talk to him about marriage and he says we still have time and i should give him two to three years time from now so i said fine first i'm not comp um, i said fine firstly i'm not compromising that two to three years from now and i've always turned down work or religious opportunities to travel out of the country i guess to see him mm. um so That's i've told him well if you want to if you want that much i will give it to you but don't expect me to ground don't expect me to ground myself to stay here because of you which i have been doing because i wasn't selfish by just taking any opportunity i thought that came first he's mm, I, oh you're not uh, dead okay fine yeah. sorry <laughs> he's now mad at me because i'm thinking in those lines what what do you think i should do let me know if you make a podcast on this but i'd love your opinion still you know this is one of those cases where it's like someone says, but I sacrificed this for you. And it's like, the I resentment that to. builds when you give someone more than you actually ought to give. Exactly. And then now Ooh. you hold them against what you gave. For yeah, intelligence. that's the thing. I mm. honestly don't feel like this man has done anything wrong. Yeah. I don't think he has done anything wrong. I feel like, why were you not taking these opportunities? Unless it was, uh, it was under false pretenses, but it doesn't seem like it was under false and pretenses. And he seems like he's still in this. Exactly. He's just not trying yeah. to get married now. And the fact that mm. he's actually been able to like, vocalize you know mm. it's different when it's like a man who's just like oh let's just wait let's just go with the flow mm. but the fact that he's even given some form of timeline i yeah. feel like i respect that yeah and i think it's unfortunate that you are giving up opportunities so that you can mm. either be with him mm. or so that you can like make room for you guys to be able to be together yeah. i feel like you should not have been doing that mm -hmm. and i feel like there's opportunity for you to now then take up those opportunities you should definitely take them you up definitely should. yeah and i get that feeling of like the urge to get married but is it the urge to just get married or, or to, to get married to this him. man exactly it seems like it's just yeah. anyone would do anyone will do because <laughs> i feel like if the urge to get married to this man then just the fact that you guys are together should be enough like mm. i feel like with love there are no there can be no like hard and fast like mm. absolutely must be this or absolutely must be that i feel yeah. like there has to be some grace yeah you know and like, i feel like if you as mm. you said because you're having a conversation with him and he's being clear mm. it's like it's it's like not right now mm. funny enough me and mike were talking about this and he was just like mm. when it when um we're getting married majority of what i'm thinking about as a man when mm. i think about marriage mm. all of those things is more on the nitty gritty how is that going to happen mm. more than you who's just like i'm in love and i want to get engaged right mm. and i never saw it that way i never saw that that decision has more in it than maybe what it has with me because me mm. i'm just like don't you love me don't you, you want us to be married to get engaged. Yeah. and it's all pretty you know um so if he's saying that for whatever reason like that's his markup i mm. personally don't think there's anything wrong with that however it also doesn't have to be what you like right if you don't want to wait for two to three years to get married you want to get married now then that's fine but i don't think that's a problem for him to say the two to three years mm. and as usual you are over giving and expecting that now this is a way for you to balance it I'm not yeah because it. if you've said that i want to get married the father he doesn't want to get married right now what you're seeing is you i have sacrificed so much and you don't appreciate it that's actually what you're hearing mm. but really what it is is that we're in a relationship and we can move at our own pace it doesn't mm. have to be right now mm. um so i would suggest if you don't want him that deep if you don't feel like your relationship is worth you waiting this two to three years then leave and the funny thing though mm. is that you leave and then now once you start a relationship with someone new because you, you might probably, not find that, you'll probably end up waiting those two to three years yeah and because then you want to get to now, know someone exactly so yeah. i just i mean I think it has to be less. It's less about the pedantics and more about like how do you feel about yeah. this person? Do you feel like it's worth waiting? And if it's not, by the way, that's perfectly fine. It's you can perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But I don't. I don't think the like either of you can be demonized in this situation. Maybe it's just like a difference in where you are yes. in life at the moment. Yeah, and for anyone who's watching, these are the things to have conversations about oh, before yeah. it's two years deep. Mm. oh my goodness you should be knowing where the trajectory of someone's life and where they want to where they want to be in mm. marriage and things like that as early as possible because now you've invested two years and then you've invested two do. years mm. and now you don't want to wait the other three years yeah but then you leave and then maybe you, if you're single for a year you get to know someone for two years now it's it, been it, three it years the same that's the thing you know so yeah. if you can 100 make sure that you know some of these things a lot early on mm -hmm. um i guess as we 
this is something in Bridgerton there would be no fuss. Everyone yeah. wants to Everybody get married. Everyone wants to get married now. Get married now. <laughs> Instantly, no question about it. Marry me now yeah. without any. See what I mean? And I simpler actually, times. You know, there's even simpler a simpler times. Simpler times. Mm-hmm. There's a point in Bridgerton where Anthony says, where Daphne. Um, is I think that that point where she's coming to speak to him in mm. the office about love mm. and whatever, and she says, um, "But do you even know her at all?" And then he says something like, "But the point of marriage is to get to know, you know, her." Yeah. Which I was just like, "Wow, I love. I actually really like that because, as opposed to here, we want to like and have get to know someone before we exactly get before we get married. When actually, I mean, I feel I personally feel like marriage is really really nice mm. with Zach specifically mm. because we d- didn't know each other. We knew each other, but we had not dated actually, like for ten years mm. before. You know, it had only been one year of us knowing each other." Mm. And I love the fact that we've continued to like get to know each other more, which yeah. I mean, marriage is, should be about that, you know? And that's I think that's why, that's why I think those, t- those times were simpler sort of, it's like, yeah. okay, I've seen you and I love you. Yeah. I like you. I want to get, get, get married, get married. No. as opposed to now let us date for 28 yeah. years and so and many people to... date and never get married and maybe they would have been married <gasps> maybe they would have been married yeah. and maybe now they would have stayed together because they were married as opposed to um you know is that a good thing or a bad thing it could be a good it might be if you're staying together not just because you're married but because mm. now your being married makes you more likely more to be able committed. To, to be like yeah let's actually work on things as opposed to like ah, this is not working out let's just break I'm up out. You know? yeah. yeah and you know what i'm actually really shocked at how easily people break up these days yeah and not oh, to nothing. invalidate yeah. not to invalidate anyone's mm. reason but sometimes i'm just like wait were you in there for real yeah were you in there seriously mm. because i can imagine like the mountains that it would take for me and mike to break up it would need to be something so catastrophic or mm. life-changing you know because you're you're, you're full hole in it yeah. you know whereas yeah. now it's just like wait were you ever in love was i fooled yeah. because it seemed like one little situ- ch- 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 it's out but it's that's done. what makes heartbreak so painful sometimes is that you think you're both in it until one day one you discover he just... Ha- he's just gone or you discover that he's been cheating on you for the past <sighs> one year like and then you're like wait so how did i what you know kind of like thing yeah crazy anyway. <sighs> God, the anyway, game of love we, is is difficult. Ooh, it's actually difficult. And, and Bridgerton uh, will show you that. We know that there are winners. How do we know you've won in the game of love when you're dying you and you're, you have your partner next to you? Exactly. Right? Yeah. So you never know. And you you're both winning. take the poison and then you Together, both die at the same time. At the same That's time, the no one suffers. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> anyway, we continue playing. We continue playing we blindly, continue play, yeah. pretending that we are enjoying. We love it. Yeah, we love pretend it. Pretend that we're enjoying. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning into this phenomenal episode, guys. We are major fans of Bridgerton, so and because it's so much it's so talked about and it's trending and it's everywhere we wanted to be part of the conversation so thank you so much for joining in and if you haven't you know what Please, to do now you know what, you know what to, to do, do now. at least we hope we've yeah. enticed you we, we we i think so in fact if i'm trying to listen to this conversation from like someone who has not watched bridgerton and now you you're going to watch it. it now you're going you're to watch, going it. To watch so it so make 100%. sure that you catch it on <laughs> netflix password come you should now go and ask your neighbor because i know your neighbor has <laughs> netflix for sure okay guys <laughs> yeah. thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next episode mm. bye